Hello there, it's Bruno with the National Weather Service. Time for another weekly weather briefing. I hope everyone enjoyed their 4th of July weekend. It was a beautiful one out there. Things will be warming up, so once again, the topic of the week is going to be heat. Before we talk about the forecast, I did want to touch on some of the June climate stats. Now, as you can see from here, all areas from coast to deserts were warmer than average last month. That departure from normal was greatest with distance away from the coast. So, for example, San Diego was only about a degree above normal last month. But that difference increases as you look at uh, inland valleys such as Riverside and especially Palm Springs with a mean temperature over 5 degrees above the average for the month of June. So definitely a warm one there. In fact, for the deserts, all three of our climate sites, and those are Thermal, Palm Springs, and Anza Borrego, recorded their warmest month of June on record. Uh, bottom left, you can see the dates that those records uh, started being kept for those locations. And you can see mean temperatures uh, well above 90 degrees for all three locations. Again, hottest June on record for our deserts. So let's take a look at the temperatures starting with Wednesday. You can see quite warm, especially out in the deserts and much cooler towards the coast. And that's really going to be the tendency throughout the next week or so. Marine layer influence is going to continue with the coast, keep areas much milder. Whereas inland, we're going to see heat gradually build, especially in the deserts, and that's going to peak this weekend. Very little change on Thursday, looking at highs in the 70s and 80s for most of the coast and the San Diego County valleys. A little warmer in the Inland Empire, highs close to 100, give or take a couple of degrees. Also very warm in the mountains, highs in the 80s and 90s, depending on your elevation. And obviously in the deserts, well above 100 degrees, and that's going to be consistent throughout the week and into the weekend. The one caveat with Thursday is that we are monitoring a push of moisture into the lower deserts and the mountains. If that does materialize, that should help keep temperatures a little bit lower on Thursday, especially in the lower deserts. That being said, it'll still feel muggy, so the relief isn't really going to come. With that moisture, there is a slight chance of an isolated thunderstorm in the mountains on Thursday, but confidence is still pretty low. On Friday, it looks like things will begin to dry out a little more, so that should allow temperatures in the lower deserts to rise back up closer to 115. Otherwise, again, very little change for the rest of the region. Temperatures still hovering uh, in the 105 to 110 range for the high desert, with highs closer to 100 in the Inland Empire, and again, much milder towards the coast. The weekend is likely to bring the peak of the heat, especially in the deserts. That's when we'll see high temperatures peak in the 105 to 115 range for the high desert. Hottest temperatures there, likely close to the Means Lake and Landers area. Likely the hottest temperatures of the year for that area so far. Not quite as hot as a previous heat wave for the lower deserts, but still between 115 and 118 likely, and with very little change west of the mountains. Moving on to Sunday, you can see that heat just does not want to budge, especially for inland areas. Still going to be looking at highs 105 to 115 for the high desert. Very similar as well for the mountains, lower desert, and inland empire. We may see a degree or two of cooling though west of the mountains. You can expect one or two degrees of cooling as well on Monday, not just for coastal areas, but likely as well for inland areas, including the deserts. That being said, it will still be plenty hot out there with highs well above 100, 110 in the deserts. With heat on the way yet again, uh, we do want to stress some heat safety tips. We've had a couple of fatalities out there, especially with hikers in recent heat waves. So one of the things we really want to stress is to know the differences and the symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. These two graphics in English and Spanish are very useful for that. So take a moment to review this, especially if you're going to be spending time outdoors. That's all from us. Have a great week.